Candice is a tough nut to crack. Don't get me wrong, she introduces a unique support kit into Genshin that I'm really excited to see how well it ages into the future. I'm just worried that right now some people may undervalue, overvalue, or just completely forget about Candace. So today I'm going to give you everything you need to know about this character to fully understand her strengths, weaknesses, and what role she takes in our ever-growing cast of characters in Genshin. As always, this guide will cover Candace's artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Especially at lower constellations, Candace's damage capabilities are limited, so her main role is most often going to be a normal attack buffer. For her damaging abilities, her skill is a counter just like Beto's, while her burst provides hydro infusion, normal attack damage bonus, and AoE hydro damage upon switching characters. Her skill has the usual energy generation where you get 2 hydro particles when tapped, and 3 hydro particles if the counter is charged up, or you parry a hit. Tapping your skill will net you a 6 second cooldown while holding the skill will net you a 9 second cooldown until you get her C4, which makes the two cooldowns the same at 6 seconds. Unlike Beto, however, her burst only costs 60 energy with a 15 second cooldown. Of course, that doesn't mean we'll be ignoring energy recharge on Candace. She has the exact same energy thresholds as Yunjin, so we're still going to need a lot of energy since she spends little time on the field. Aside from the various effects of Candace's burst and some info about her energy generation specifics, what really makes Candace into a character worth considering is her second Ascension Talent. The Ascension Talent states that the character under the effects of her elemental burst will have their elemental normal attacks deal 0.5% increased damage against enemies for every 1000 HP points that Candace has. What's so captivating about this buff is that it's not actually limited to those under the Hydro Infusion from her burst. This buff will apply to all characters that deal elemental damage with their normal attacks, meaning a bow character like Yoi Mia or a melee character like Hu Tao who has non-overridable pyro infusion can still benefit from this buff. Compared to a similar character like Yunjin, her normal attack buff may not scale quite as hard in terms of pure damage. But with the new and improved HP% percent from the Hydro Resonance, Candice has definitely found a niche as a good support for many characters given that Hoyoverse continues to just add in more HP scaling characters. Her build will strictly focus energy recharge and HP, making her quite simple and easy to gear up. Not to mention, all of her skill and burst damage do have HP scaling, allowing us to get cheap damage without spending thousands of resin trying to optimize for crit. I've already introduced the stats that Candice wants when giving you an overview of her kit, so these artifacts shouldn't be too surprising. Candice's best artifact combination is either going to be the 2-set Tenacity of the Millilith with the 2-set Emblem of Severed Fate, or simply just the 4-set Noblesse Oblige. Both combinations are fairly easy to obtain and look to bolster her buffing abilities to the maximum. Noblesse is suited for elemental DPS characters that scale with attack like Yoi Mia or Ayato, while if you have an HP scaling elemental attacker like Hu Tao or Kokomi, you may want to consider the Tenacity and 2 ESF instead. Artifact stats for Candice are triple HP in the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet, with ER as an option in the Sands for certain scenarios. Specifics on Candice's weapons will be covered in a few minutes, but most of her options are Energy Recharge pole arms, so we can afford to go triple HP to maximize that Ascension Talent. If you're using an HP weapon like Black Tassel or Staff of Homa, ER is also a viable option in the Sands as well. You probably could have guessed this already, but her substat priority is obviously going to be HP% percent, energy recharge and flat HP. A lot of energy recharge is going to come from your weapon for the most part, but in total we're looking from anywhere to 180 to 200% percent energy recharge for Candice under the assumption that every rotation we only use her skill once. Now I know there's some players out there just looking for Candice to do some sort of damage because that's just what Genshin players do. Don't lie to yourself. So especially for my C6 Candice players, listen closely because there are some adjustments that need to be made for a sub DPS build versus a pure supportive build. C6 Candice will grant her extra waves of AoE Hydro damage when a character deals elemental damage with their normal attacks and these waves have a 2.3 second cooldown. With this in mind, Candice's new best artifact set for damage is going to be the 4 set Emblem of Severed Fate since the extra waves from her C6 are considered elemental burst damage. Like many other characters, not only does this set help solve her energy problem, but it also serves as her best damage option given that we're always stacking as much ER as we possibly can. 
Other damage options include any combination between the 2 set Noblesse, 2 set Heart Adept, and 2 set Tenacity of the Millilith. None of these combinations of 2 sets are going to be nearly as good as the 4 set ESF, but they're still pretty close and extremely solid on Candice. Artifact stats for the sub DPS build will be HP% percent in the Sands, Hydro Damage bonus in the Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage in the Circlet. It should be expected that you're gutting her support capability in exchange for personal damage, and there's really no way around this. With this build, her buff will be decent, but don't expect it to be anything game-breaking, that much I can say for sure. Substat focus for the sub DPS build is crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and HP percent. Get as much energy recharge as you can in substats because with the 4 set ESF, it's imperative that you get as close to 200% energy recharge as possible. Candace's weapons are about as simple as it gets, but unfortunately that does mean you don't have very many options. On the bright side, her clear best two options are going to be 4 star polearms, so she's very free to play friendly to build. Bavonius Lance is the premier support polearm with other peer support characters like Yunjin and Toma also using this weapon. If you have this weapon to spare, definitely use it on Candice, but if you can't spare it because someone else is using it, don't stress out too much. The Catch is another popular polearm and not just favored by Candace. Like Favonius Lance, the Catch also has many other users, except this time it's DPS characters like Shangling and Raiden Shogun that love this weapon. The Catch is your completely free-to-play option for energy recharge, but again, don't stress if you cannot spare this weapon for Candace. The reason why I say don't stress about having either the Catch or Favonius Lance available for Candace is because the Black Tassel exists. Although it may not be exactly on par with the 4-star options, this 3-star polearm is pretty damn close. With an ER Sans, this weapon is extremely functional and it's the ultimate budget option for Candace. If you're a Black Tassel Zhongli enjoyer, then you're sure to love this weapon on Candace as well. As for your more pay-to-win options, these are also pretty straightforward. Alongside the catch, Staff of Homa is Candace's best damage option for the C6 sub DPS build. Otherwise, Engulfing Lightning and Scoured Spine are your other 5-star energy recharge options. The two passives on these weapons are very situational for Candace, and you're mainly using these two polearms just for the energy recharge. Last but not least, we've gotten to Candace's teams. This is the most interesting part of the video because team compositions is where most of the undervaluing or overvaluing of Candace takes place. Yes, she has Hydro Infusion with her burst, but that doesn't have to be the focal point when building teams around Candace. She has multiple other benefits that she can provide to the team, especially with the newly buffed Hydro Resonance. So today I'll briefly give you three of her best team ideas to build off of, so you can get a hunch about what kind of team she shines in. First up, let's tackle Candace as the support for Pyro characters, specifically Hu Tao and Yoimiya. Quick disclaimer, she does not replace the role of a Hydro Applicator. She is only here to buff the normal attack damage of our Pyro carries, and you're going to have to run a second Hydro unit for actual Hydro application. With that out of the way, the team will consist of Candice, Hu Tao or Yoimiya, Xing Chiu, and Zhang Li. Although Hu Tao's main damage is from her charge attack, Candice is still a great option here because Hu Tao still normal attacks in between her charge attacks, and she also grants the Hydro Resonance to the team. If you haven't noticed, this is basically the double Hydro team for Hu Tao if you're a player that missed out on Yolan's banner in 2.7. The Yoimiya variant is much more intuitive since Yoimiya is a pure normal attack damage dealer. In the case of either Yoimiya or Hu Tao, if you don't have Zhang Li, you can replace him with Toma for the Pyro Resonance, but obviously, the attack percent will more noticeably affect Yoimiya. Next, we have Candice in an Electro Charge team. Here, Candice can buff a variety of Hydro characters and also buff Sino if you're looking for a character within the Electro cast. A Taser team with Candice will have Candice, an off-field Electro character, Kokomi, and Sucrose or Kazaha to swirl the elements around. The off-field Electro character will most often be Fischl or Raiden Shogun, given that they are the consistent options without the Electro Resonance, but Beto, Yaimiko, and Electro are also options to consider as long as you have enough energy recharge. Kokomi by far is Candice's best Hydro pair because both benefit from the Hydro Resonance, and Kokomi is a huge normal attacker when she's the on-field driver for a Taser team. However, you can also choose to pair Candice with Ayato, Child, or even Xing Chu with Candice's Hydro Infusion. Keep in mind that getting rid of Kokomi's heals leaves Ayato and Child players with a difficult decision. 
Either you run Dori or Kuki Shinobu as your Electro, use Jean and Sayu instead of Sucrose or Kazuha, or just completely forego the Animo character and run a double Electro double Hydro setup with one Electro Healer and one off-field Electro DPS. On the other hand, Xing Chu doesn't nearly have this problem because sometimes his rain swords are already enough to sustain you through a battle. Last but not least, we have a really fun team with Zhong Li. The team consists of Zhong Li, Yunjin, Candice, and either Xing Chu or Yulan. The premise of this team is to have Zhong Li with the four set Archaic Petra and buff either Xing Chu or Yulan's off field damage since both of their bursts are dynamic. The great thing about Zhang Li is that his normal attacks have high motion values and scale off HP. This is where Yunjin and Candice come in. Candice will not only provide the Hydro Resonance, but also provide Hydro Infusion and extra damage for Zhang Li's Hydro Infused attacks. Yunjin will provide the Geo Resonance and her normal attack buff to provide even more damage to Zhang Li. There's a lot of different buffs working in harmony with this team, and it may not be the first team that comes to mind when building Candice, but I really encourage you to try it out. This is my personal favorite team to just play around with simply because of how unorthodox yet how sensical it actually is. And with that, that's all I have time for. Hopefully I've gotten you sold on how valuable Candace can actually be without making her out to be some sort of omnipotent support when she clearly isn't. If you've been enjoying Candace so far, let me know down in the comments your build and what team you have her in. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. You can follow me on Twitch or sub to the YouTube channel, whatever people do nowadays. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.